Avengers Infinite Wars Chapter 15 Ryloth Calling Steve sat back in his chair in a relaxed posture while looking over the seven lightsaber forms of the GD, studying the movements and instructions extensively. He sat within a spacious room shared by the current five Avengers, with Rhodey taking a nap on a couch nearby, while Sam, Scott and Hope were going over a set of materials that Tap had brought to their attention, that would undoubtedly be useful to them in the future. You sure these materials will work, Tap? Hope asked, sifting through them. They will indeed, Comrade Hope. Tap assured. I have done extensive scans and compared chemicals and elements back to the ones on Earth. These will go well in mixing with your equipment and armor. But we still gotta figure out how to make more ammo. Sam said, moving a bullet between his fingers. I think we can figure something out. Scott said. Thanks to Tap, I got some billiard schematics out, and now we've got some money coming our way. Hope, Steve and Sam paused in what they were doing, slowly turning to the ex-convict with blank stares that silently told him to elaborate. Oh, right. Scott nudged the side of his head. So, I was thinking about how to keep us supplied, and I know you guys all talked about not relying entirely on the GD and taking advantage of them, so Akinda was brainstorming on how to make Mon I mean credits here. He did indeed comrades. Tap spoke up for Scott. And I remember Hope talking about her old business days running Hank's old company, and really supplying the world with something new that they hadn't seen before. Scott said more excitedly. So when I saw that this galaxy doesn't know about Earth's entertainment, I figured that would be the best bet to start some income. Well, honestly that was entirely Tap's ideas. I was just spitballing the whole thing. Hope and Sam's jaws dropped slightly, while Steve arched a brow, all three at a momentary loss for words at the rather crazy news they had just heard. Well shit, nice work tic tac. Sam appraised with a slightly breathless laugh. You've been busy. Steve said, clearly impressed with Scott's thinking in regards to their situation. Hope simply walked up to her boyfriend and kissed him something fierce leaving him in a daze and out of breath. I'm so proud of you. Hope said earnestly with Scott only managing dopey smile. I see I'm interrupting something personal here then. Drawled a voice from the exit of the room. Everyone, save for a napping Rhodey, turned to see Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka Tano standing at the door. Hey, Sky Guy. Sam greeted with a shit-eating grin that made Anakin deadpan at the aviator with Ahsoka smiling cheekily at her master. I find it ironic that you of all people would call me that, Falcon. Anakin dryly said making Sam shrug. What's up Anakin? Sam asked. The GD Council has just received a transmission from Ryloth. Anakin informed them. It's a Republic world that's currently held by the Separatists. We thought all our forces were wiped out when we received a message that GD General Dai and a handful of his men are still alive and assisting the freedom fighters on the planet and resisting the droids. That's good to hear. Steve said. Why are you telling us though? It's what came in the message that may interest you all. Anakin held up a holo projector and activated the transmission sent from Ryloth. There, they watched a new alien they had no seen before next to cloned captain, who had his back turned with his guns up, firing at unseen enemy forces. This is GD General Lee Magundai. The Nikto GD master spoke somewhat frantically, though he kept his steady tone. I, along with my men and Cham's forces, have been holding out on the ground here, but we are losing men and supplies. To any and all, we need relief now. The Separatists are taking many Twi'lex hostage and holding them in enslavement. We. There were explosions heard in the background, with both men nearly losing their balance, and just before the transmission ended, the two men seemingly vanished before being consumed by flames. At first the Avengers didn't know what to make of it, but to Steve's trained and enhanced eyes, he saw something a bit unusual. Can you play back the message and slow it down? Steve asked. Anakin nodded and went back to replay the message once more, where Steve asked him to slow down the last few seconds before the background explosion ended the message. It was a bit difficult to make out what they were looking at, but what was clear to them was that something had taken the GD and the clone out of frame. Something that wasn't clearly seen. What was that? Scott asked, looking up at Anakin in confusion. I don't know. Anakin said, sharing Scott's expression. But Master Yoda reached out to the Force and felt that Master Dai had not perished. Something saved him. Something that he couldn't detect. Any idea who or what? Sam asked. No clue, sadly. Steve on the other hand contemplated for a brief moment, going over what he watched, and trying to get an idea as to what that last message had revealed. If Grandmaster Yoda spoke of this general not being dead, then that meant that something or maybe someone had saved them. 
Someone with abilities that can protect them from explosions or heavy damage or better yet, someone that was capable of outrunning explosions and flames. He prayed for any one of those descriptions to be true. His thought process was interrupted when Obi-Wan Kenobi had entered the room. There you are, Anakin. Kenobi said. Obi-Wan. Anakin greeted in an inquisitive tone. Everyone. Obi-Wan added, nodding to the Avengers and Tino. I had come for Anakin at first, but I would invite you to come speak with the Council. We have just received word that General Dai has re-established contact with us. At this point, they heard a grunt from the corner of the room, and everyone turned to see Rhodey had awoken with a tired yawn. Rubbing the sleep out of his eyes, Rhodey looked around and saw his team and the three GD they usually associated with standing at the front of the room. What did I miss? Scene cut. The three GD led the Avengers to the main meeting room within the GD Temple of all GD, walking into a room filled with most of the council, several other high-ranking GD knights and masters, along with their clone commanders and captains. Some were here via holo projection as they were in other sectors of the galaxy. Can you hear us, Master Dai? GD Master Mace Windu spoke to the transmission. Bits of static could be heard over the transmission, even with the holocom fritzing out every other moment. I repeat, can you hear us? Low and clear, Mazdu. The image of General Dai fizzled in and out along with whoever it was that stood beside him. Is there any way for us to boost his signal? Plo Koon inquired. Let me give it a try. Kenobi said, announcing his arrival to the meeting room with the rest of his group. Stepping forward, Obi-Wan began to punch in several commands and changes into the link between here and Ryloth. After a few seconds, the fritzing steadied out and showed a more clear visual of Dai, along with his cloned captain, and the Twi'lek beside him yet a few times it glitched and fizzled. Master Dai. Yoda stepped forward. Hear us, you can. Yes, but I am money for how long Dai replied, his image flickering. The droids have been jamming our signals FT some time now. We're just glad to see you're alive and breathing, Dai. Master Eve caught the remark from his own transmission in his part of the galaxy. We had feared the worst when we had lost contact with the Republic garrison stationed on Ryloth. We've been hull out for as long as we can, my friends. Dai answered. But the droids are sting to mount up more sturdier defenses. Captain Keeley added with grim countenance. We can do more hit and run tactics without throwing away lives and sources. Don't worry, we plan on heading over there as soon as possible. Obi-Wan said. You have our word on that. We would like it if you could come sooner than LR. The Twi'lek now spoke with a more curt tone. Apologies, masters. Dai spoke with a bow of his head. As is Sham Sindala, the leader of the Twi'lek Rezans force. They've been aiding us in staying alive and keying rail high. Greetings to you Dot. Likewise, Windu said. We greatly appreciate your assistance. This is not assistance, Mr. Jidi. Cham brushed off. This is me merely doing my duty to my people. Where are you all right now? Plo Koon inquired. Underground. General Dai answered. Though we are constantly Ming. Best to remain undetected by the Separatists. Keeley added. Though it an apostrophe T help with the signals. You still managed to get your message and transmission to us. Windu said with underlying praise. And we will come to relieve you of the Separatist forces on Ryloth immediately. We promise. Dai nodded. We shall await your. General Dai. The clone from off-screen called out to the general before stepping into the transmission, saluting his superior. Sergeant Grid. Sir, Romaf has returned with supplies. Over the holo transmission, Master Dai and Sindala shown great relief upon hearing this. This is great news. Sindala gladfully said. Who is that who came? Anakin couldn't help but ask. The one who has been aiding in keeping our forces alive and well. Captain Keeley spoke. Fast one, really. Seps can't even touch him. At this statement, the Avengers glanced at one another sharing startled looks. You don't think Sam muttered? I don't know. Hope replied. Steve looked to the transmission determinedly. General Dai. The Nikto General looked to Captain Rogers, tilting his head a bit as he does not know who he is. Apologies, and you are. Dai asked politely. Captain Rogers. Steve introduced himself noting a strange look on the GD's expression when he heard his name, that person who has just come back, he wouldn't happen to be. The transmission abruptly cut out, making everyone pause momentarily before Scott couldn't help himself. Alright, what kind of bullshit timing was that? He yelled out frustratedly. Putting aside Scott's crass words on the situation, Plo Koon began, that was a rather unfortunate turn of events. 
Is there any way we could get the signal back? Isla Sakura had asked. Probably, but not for a while. Obi-Wan admitted, already attempting said action. Better is act now, then dwell on what is past. Yoda said. Help our GD brother and troopers, we must. Indeed. Windu simply said. Since as we're all here. Captain Rogers started out. We're dealing with a planet under Separatist control, right? What are we dealing with? Anakin came to the console and typed a series of commands to pull up the current status of Ryleth. As you may know, a blockade is stationed around the planet, and from what our scouts were able to relay back to us, a tight one at that. On the holo display they saw at least half a dozen Lucrehold battleships, and over a few dozen more munificent class frigates with several dreadnoughts. It's a stacked blockade with very little room for entry points, Anakin said. Right now though, judging by their positioning, the right flank appear to be the least reinforced. That's gonna be our primary entry point to aim for. But this is still a sizable blockade, Skywalker. Plo stated. Not one that can be so easily broken. Alone he will not go. Yoda said. Requires a strong force, this does. Masters Windu and Kenobi with Knight Sakura will make up the strike force. Plan with Master Skywalker, you will all do. We're going to. Steve stepped forward, with the Avengers all nodding. Are you certain for this one, Captain Rogers? Kenobi asked with Steve only nodding in conviction. For the assistance, as always, we thank you. Spoke the Grandmaster. A part of the planning we ask you to be with. Steve only nodded, and with the now assigned GD, the two groups were left alone save for Yoda, and several of the currently present council members, that were not off planet. Scene cut. Last. Master died grunted out. Signals lost. Force knows how long it'll take now to get back with the others. Let's just hope they'll arrive in a timely manner. Commented Sindala. Dai only nodded when he heard a familiar light-hearted accent. Sorry I'm late, friends. Pietro spoke as he munched on a small portion of a ration bar. You would not believe the clankers out there. Man, they're annoying. We can imagine, Pietro. Sindala said as he gave the silver-haired man a warm smile. Chan. Pietro saluted jokingly making the Twi'lek roll his eyes at the Sokovian's attitude. So what's going on? Looked like you were talking with someone. We just were, but the transmission was cut short at an inopportune moment. And who would that be? The GD Council, of course. Master Dai responded. More guys like you. Pietro said in interest. Hey, since I've been helping out, think they'll reward me with one of those lightsabers you all have. Highly doubt that could ever happen. Commented the Twi'lek. Hate to imagine seeing you of all people wielding one. H-E-E-Y, I resent that. A lightsaber is not something to be rewarded. Dai stated. Usually. But exceptions can be made. General Dai, you can't be serious. Keely asked in faux exasperation. Maximoff would cleave most of us in half by accident if he got one of your sabers. Great support, Keely. Pietro said with a deadpan. So glad that we have established such a good relationship. Come on, I'll be careful. All he got in return was a couple of dry looks aimed at his general direction. Wow tough crowd. Tough crowd. Still, it is relieving to hear that help is at long last coming. Cham said, steering the conversation back to the more pressing matter at hand. Question is, how long it will take for them to breach Ryleth's blockade? Keely asked the obvious question. Something tells me it won't be that long. Still there was someone strange amongst the GD council. Tai spoke up, crossing his arms in thought. He was not a man I recognized nor was he a GD from the looks of his attire. For that matter, he was not alone. What you mean, Dai? Pietro asked. Dai was about to open his mouth when someone pushed past Pietro's leg and ran up to Cham. Dad. Hair. Cham greeted with a loving smile, hoisting her up in the air. Dad, look. The young green-skinned Twi'lek child waved his small doll in her hands. Pietro got this for me and everyone else at the camp. Did he now? Cham looked at the Sokovian with an amused smirk, who merely shrugged. Thought it would at least brighten up the kids' moods. As long as the young are at least cheerful, then many of us parents will feel better in this conflict. Scene cut. It didn't take long for the assembled fleets of the chosen GD to get their ships in order and up into space and hyperspace, en route to Ryleth. The plan was simple, on paper or data pads, with Anakin being the first to arrive and strike the blockade. Hopefully by the time the fleets run by Obi-Wan, Windu and Isla arrive to Ryleth, the blockade will be weakened enough or at least caught off guard, that they won't be able to hold. Once done, the fleets will spread out to various points on the planet and liberate major strongholds. 
we'll be dealing with heavy amounts of droid fighters. Kenobi said speaking from his ship. Are you certain this is the right course of action, Anakin? We're not gonna be doing anything heavy, just lighting up the load. Anakin said from the Resolute. It'll be harassment tactics. Rhodey and Sam showed us a few new fighter formations and plans from Earth, and we'll definitely keep the Seps on their toes. Hopefully their methods will work here. We'll just have to wait and see, Master. Anakin said with his usual confident grin. The transmission between himself and Obi-Wan was joined by Sakura and Windu with Rhodey, Sam and Steve standing beside Anakin. So what exactly is this new plan of yours, Skywalker? Windu asked, crossing his arms. We're dealing with Lucre Hulk ships, which means we're gonna get swarmed with fighters. Anakin said, recalling the many times he has taken on these ships. Those munificent frigates aren't known for holding that much fighters, but it's the dreadnoughts we really need to worry about. That's where Colonel Rhodes and his new formation comes into play. Captain Rex spoke up, pressing down a button that brought up ships aligned in three diagonals, with two finger four formations below and above the diagonal line bombers. If the dreadnoughts are the powerhouse of the fleet, then I'll lead this assault with an overlapped formation. Rhodey explained. Use those V-19s to keep the vultures and hyenas off their backs, while the Y-wing bombs focus on disabling the weapons and shields of the ship. Leaving Ahsoka time to lead a few squadrons with her squadron to take on the Lucrehulk battleship. Anakin added. Windu, I'll and Obi-Wan all exchanged wary glances at one another. Are you certain your Padawan is ready for such a dangerous task? Windu asked tensely. She's not going to be going in just head on and blind. Steve quickly cut in. We're gonna be using luring tactics, get some of the fighters and frigates to break their formations, and get in range of the turbo guns. Just get here in time before you miss out on all the fun. Anakin remarked with a grin. And I'll bring the snacks. Scott sounded off from Obi-Wan's ship. Very well Anakin. Obi-Wan said. We'll see you soon. With the transmission ending, Anakin made his way towards the hangar to check up on his Padawan. You sure Ahsoka is ready for something like this, Anakin? Steve asked in total seriousness, not really liking the idea of the young teen going off by herself into the middle of a dogfight. She's been training vigorously and she needs to start applying it more on her own. Anakin said determinedly. Besides, she's not alone. She's got Sam and Rhodey out there with her. Be that as it may, the experiences from training and being on the given field are vastly different. Steve argued back. Most of her missions have been carried out with you right by her side. And on the ground, for that matter. I am right by her side. Anakin said. Well behind her, but she will have our support. Don't you trust my Padawan? I do. Steve answered straight away. Believe me, but I just want to make sure that you do. And that she trusts herself to do this and doesn't do anything cocky or stupid. Feels like that's a jab at me somewhere. Anakin. I know Steve, I get it. Anakin placed a friendly hand on the super soldier's shoulder. Upon entering the hangar, they made their way towards Ahsoka's ship. Nearby, Rhodey and Sam along with broadside and clone pilot Axe, converse with her. There they overheard her talking to her astromech. This is my first time commanding my own squadron, R7. Ahsoka said absent-mindedly. Let's make a good impression. Nervous at all? Sam asked rather stoically. Of course I'm not nervous Ahsoka cut herself off at the expectant look given to her by Rhodey and Sam. Why does everyone keep asking me that? She asked after a moment of silence. Cause this is a big deal, kid. Rhodey said. You said it yourself, it's your first time leading your own squadron. But. Hey Snips. Anakin caught her attention, leaning on her starfighter with an encouraging smile. Steve stood in the background giving a more neutral look. This is it, your first command. Don't be nervous. I wish everyone would stop saying that. Ahsoka said, glancing down a bit. It's okay to be nervous. Sam said placatingly. You just need to keep calm and remember your training. Anakin said. The men are depending on you to lead them. With their lives. Thanks master that just takes all the pressure right off. Ahsoka deadpanned. If I wasn't nervous before I sure am now. Hey, you can do this, Snips. Anakin assured her. I have faith in you. I wouldn't be putting you in charge if I didn't. Anakin walked away after, with Steve staying behind. Let the force be with you. I won't let you down. Ahsoka murmured. I hope. Trust your instincts, Ahsoka. Steve advised. And don't do anything reckless. Rhodey tacked on. Or too reckless at least. We best get moving. Sam stated, signaling the others. 
Don't want to be left behind from the rest. Departing from Ahsoka's starfighter, the young Padawan exhaled heavily while trying to steady heart rate and steal her nerves. Alright. You got this, you got this. Just remember your training. Ahsoka said to herself before addressing her squadron. You boys ready for this? This is 2x, waiting on you skipper. Radio on 3, this is skipper, over. This is Slava, ready when you are. Radio on 4, kickback checking in. Suit to blue leader, group 2 is standing by, over. Taco to mother bird, over. Alright. Ahsoka said narrowing her eyes. Let's do this. Anakin's fleet exited hyperspace, comprising of three Venators and three Acclimator. Admiral Ulleran stood on the bridge of the flagship Resolute, looking straight ahead at the Confederate blockade. Launch all fighters, prep the shields and guns. Ulleran instructed the pilots. Zooming across the field, the Republic fighters saw the enemy being released and heading towards their positions. Ahsoka led her own squadron while Rhodey along with Sam's own set of fighters, flew past her. More starfighters joined in and were racing across the emptiness of space right towards the cis ships. Okay boys, remember finger four formations. Ahsoka instructed. Three sets on the left and three on the right. You got it. Roger that. The clones aligned themselves behind their commander and had their fingers trailing their guns as they drew closer to the seps. Aboard the capital ship of the Separatist blockade, when Nemoidi and Captain Martuk had just finished conversing with Separatist leader Wat Tambor, when he saw the arrival of the Republic fleet and them launching their fighters. A shrewd tactician, the first thing he noticed was the rather unusual formation that the Republic fighters were getting into. This rather confused the captain as he had not seen these kinds of tactics from any Republic force he had faced before. However, there was one known GD general who was known for his unorthodox and even daring tactics in battle. Wanting to confirm his suspicions as to who he was currently facing, he ordered a droid to run through the ship registry to see what Star Destroyer was before him. Was it long to confirm that it was the Resolute, hence the infamous Anakin Skywalker was leading this offense against him. From what he knows of the GD, his tactics were often unusual than the norm. A means of keeping people on their toes. What are you planning, Skywalker? Martuk analyzed the fighter formation while ordering the release of all fighters. He saw many Vulture, Hyena and Tri Starfighters fly straight at the oncoming Republic fighters. Back aboard the Resolute, Anakin and Steve returned to the bridge, standing by Ulleran as they watched the eventual clash between their forces. Attention Red and Green Squadron, form up and defend the fleet. Anakin ordered out. Blue Squadron, Shadow Squadron, Torrent Squadron you're all clear to engage. Copy that, Master. Ahsoka responded. Copy Skywalker. Rhodey said, piloting his own GD Starfighter that Anakin had given to him to use for this battle. Here we go. Steve murmured. Ahsoka was flying straight ahead, hands tightening around her controls. Alright boys, you ready for some action? You know it, Skipper. Axe replied getting a chorus of agreement from the rest of the squadron. As they drew closer, Ahsoka gave out her first order. Open fire. The squadrons began firing at the oncoming swarm of droid starfighters. Let them pass between us. Ahsoka said as they were only a few meters away. Pick your targets, stay in formation. The fleet and backup squads will pick off the rest. On their end, Rhodey and Sam lead their squads and engage the closest dreadnought and the munificent frigates and their fighters. They had already engaged the enemy, losing several of their own fighters, while basically blowing out every vulture, hyena and tri-fighter, out of the way of their own guns. Do these guys ever use defensive tactics? Sam said with a shake of his head, piloting a V-19. I don't think it's in their programming sir. Broadside said with a joking tone as his ship flew on Sam's side. It is not in their programming. Said a Russian accented voice that none of the clones recognized. Oh what was that? Greetings comrades, I am the Avengers personal AI, Tab. There was a lull of silence as the clone pilots weren't exactly sure on how to respond. Thank you for that, Tab. Rhodey said with a drawl of annoyance. I'll tell you about it later boys, focus up. We're nearing the dreadnought. V-19 stay in tight formation. We gotta keep the fighters off the bombers for their run. Copy Shadow Leader. Was the echoing response of the clones. Pivoting his ship to the side, Rhodey lead the charge against the oncoming wave of September Starfighters, shooting down a handful with his group doing the same. The Y-Wing bombers shot at the droid forces as well, but maintained their courses to their assigned targets. On the other side of the dreadnought, Sam was leading Torrent Squadron with him engaging the droid's starfighters, along with his clone pilots. 
Watch those guns, Torn Squad. Sam advised, clenching his controls tightly as he pivoted them to perform a mixture of a Bear Laro LL a real aviation base barrel roll, an Aileron ROLL the true barrel roll, avoiding several tri fighters and the defensive guns of the targeted dreadnought. Sir, the nearby munificent frigates are starting to move in to reinforce the dreadnought. One of his pilots informed him. All fighters, on me. Sam instructed. We'll target their engines and leave them stranded then pull out. Get into bombing formation. Yes sir, was the collective response. The V-19s flew above a set of Y-wing bombers and flew past the hangar bay of the dreadnought, going straight at the engines. Picking off a few stray vultures and hyenas, Sam and his V-19s angled upwards to clear the way for the first two sets of bombing runs. All the while, Martuk sat back and observed the ensuing battle. The Republic appeared to have lead a very coordinated and precision-based attack, with most of their forces primarily hitting the right flank, which to them appeared to be the weakest. Their venators and acclimators were firing at the more fragile frigates of the blockade, with two squads targeting one of their only dreadnoughts. Then there was the one large squadron of Republic V-19 fighters being led by one GD starfighter headed right for his ship. Strange really. It was precise yet scattered. Focused yet flexible it seemed. This was highly unorthodox, but that was to be expected of Skywalker. Sir? One of the droids walked up to him. We've received word from Dreadnought Cruiser Beta 3 that they are sustaining heavy damage. The Republic fighters are proving difficult to bring down. Martuk brought up the currently damaged Dreadnought and paid attention to the fighter formation of the Republic fighters. Getting a better look at it, their formation while appearing stacked on top of one another than aligned, seemed to give the illusion of an easier target to hit. However, to the trained eye it was clear to see that this was done intentional, as it was made to give off 5 levels of fire powers, while also being spaced apart enough to scatter on a dime if given the order, while also being able to reform upon notice. Truly an ingenious method of flying Martuk had not seen before. Bring in our reinforcements. Martuk ordered. Let us push the Republic back. Anakin's fleet had been pressing their attack for several minutes now, the side of Republic and Cis fighters sipping back and forth in front of them, in order to keep them from being overwhelmed. He had received word that Isla and Obi-Wan's fleet would be arriving at any moment now, and would smash through their left flank, that had slowly been repositioning themselves to engage his fleet and reinforce the right flank. Of course, that's what it seemed to be. Sir? One of the clones spoke up from his post. We're detecting five new enemy ships coming out of hyperspace. What? Euleran said in alarm. Looks like they made the right flank a baited target. Steve said, disgruntled by the news even though the Resolute just shot down and destroyed a munificent frigate. We must warn the fighter squadrons. Anakin said, running to the holo table behind him with Steve joining him. All fighters, this is General Skywalker. Anakin spoke through the comm links. The Separatists are calling in reinforcements. Fall back within our guns range and wait for the other fleets to come in to back us up. I repeat, fall back within range of our guns now. Out in space, Rhodey heard the commands though he was closing in on one of the main turbo lasers of the dreadnought. Bombers, get that gun and pull back. Copy shadow leader. Broadside set with gritted teeth. Ion cannons away. The group of Y-wing bombers unleashed a torrent of purple sphere that went smashed through the metals of the turbo laser, destroying it entirely. The shooting, Shadow Squadron. Rhodey prays just as several munificent frigates appeared out of hyperspace. Pull back now. The squadron scattered quickly and all made a beeline back to the friendly space, while droid starfighters moved in to pursue them. Suddenly, at the corner of his eye Rhodey saw a fiery explosion from the backside of the dreadnought they had been targeting with the ship now angling down. Hold on Rhodey, we're on our way. Sam Wilson said, his ship in view on the horizon with Torrent Squad behind him, as they moved in to alleviate Shadow Team from the pursuing fighters. Nice timing Sam. Rhodey prays. On the Resolute, Steve and Anakin grinned at seeing the Dreadnought get taken out of commission at the very least, before the full arrival of the Sep's reinforcements. Ahsoka, where are you? Anakin said worriedly, noticing she had not returned. We're getting harried here, Master. Ahsoka admitted, desperately avoiding the guns and fighter of the Lucrehulk battleship that Martu commanded. We can't exactly break off otherwise we'll be open to getting shot down. There's too many of them. Anakin clenched his fist upon hearing that, but Steve moved quickly. Sam, Rhodey, you hear that? Steve asked. Loud and clear cat. Rhodey said. Hold on snips, we're coming. Sam said. 
Torrents V19 Zami. Rodi will be the second defense. Copy that, Rodi said. Sam guided 12 V19s towards Ahsoka's squadron, who were fighting and dodging frantically from the newly arrived Sis starfighters and frigates. Suddenly, just when they were needed, Obi-Wan and Isla Sakura's fleets had arrived. Impeccable timing, Obi-Wan. Anakin said in relief, watching the newly arrived Republic ships begin firing upon the blockade and deploying their own starfighters. It appears I must pull you out of every situation you're in, Anakin. Obi-Wan Riley said as he observed the battle from his bridge. Gentlemen, save it for another time. I lightly admonished. We have men that need our aid. Both GD men agreed as they began to position themselves to deliver critical blows upon the Separatist fleet blockade. Martuk was now worried. Not one, but two Republic fleets had arrived to reinforce the attack on his ships, and immediately they were feeling the effects. Several munificent frigates were beginning to sustain heavy damage, while the four other dreadnoughts they had fired everything they had at the fresh Republic enemies. When the other Lukerhulk battleships was also begin to get fired upon. It was considerably even on both ends in terms of firepower. The Confederate captain was well aware that while the Republic usually did not deploy as many ships as his own faction did, they more than made up for it in superior firepower. The v always had a better edge on the typical CIS ship, though not always the case, but still he was aware that many naval engagements over the past few months had been primarily Republic having fewer numbers, but better firepower with the CIS relying on numbers. Which was natural of course considering just how long they had been building up their force well before the start of the Clone Wars, going back as far as before the Crisis of Naboo. Bring up deflector shields. Martu constructed rapidly. I will not have the Republic just walk all over us. Roger, Roger. The battle had intensified considerably now with the arrival of two Republic fleets. Ahsoka had now been joined by Sam and Rhodey's squadron that were now assisting them in taking on the main Lukerhulk flagship. Axe who had been by Ahsoka's side was clipped. I'm hit. Axe said, trying to keep his ship steady. Before he was shot down, Ahsoka pulled up behind him taking out his pursuers. Are you alright, Axe? Ahsoka asked in concern. Just a scratch, boss. Axe assured. I'm still in the air. We need to start hitting the ship. Ahsoka said to her squadron. How skipper? Kickback asked. Their shields are still up. Leave that to us. Rhodey chimed in. We'll focus on their shields and when we get him down, you guys hit them hard. Copy that, Rhodey. Ahsoka said appreciatively. You heard him blue squadron. Now form up behind me. Copy blue leader. Ahsoka couldn't deny she was starting to get shaky in resolve. She had lost several pilots by this point, most of which had been right in front of her. And now she was leading her men right towards more enemy fire. Quickly shaking her head back and forth to rid herself of negative thoughts, Ahsoka accelerated her ship with the rest of her squadron doing the same. Just as they flew over one of the cylindrical center of the Lukerhulk ship, another one of her pilots were shot down. Guys, Ahsoka said worriedly. We need those shields down. Working on it. Sam said, firing torpedoes while his Y-wing squad dropped ion bombs. The shields were decreasing fast, but not fast enough as several more Republic starfighters were shot down. To make matters worse, Rhodey was beginning to get swarmed by vultures on all sides. Now he wasn't an ace pilot in his own right for nothing, but even he knew when he was being overwhelmed. They were pursuing him all around the Lukerhulk ship, clearly marking him as a priority target. Son of a bitch. Rhodey said, the sight of his ship getting clipped by some stray blaster fire. They're all over me. Hold on sir, we're coming. Broadside said, guiding Shadow Squadron to back up their commanding officer. Negative, Broadside. Rhodey ordered. Stay focused on the objective, you need to give Blue Squadron a path. But sir? Don't worry about me, Trooper. Rhodey said through clenched teeth, jolting to the side sharply to avoid several missiles that were directed at him. He flew past the hangar bay of the Lucre Hulk and got a bit of a crazy idea. Tap, think you can analyze a flight path towards the center of the ship? Rhodey inquired. Right away, comrade. Rhodey. Sam chimed in. Please don't tell me you're doing what I think you're doing. Afraid so. Roddy said with a roguish grin, his helmet forming around his head and snapping shut. There was a decompression of air as the suit completely went airtight. What are you guys talking about? Ahsoka asked over the comms. Something stupid, Ahsoka, just get ready for your bombing run. Rhodey assured, repositioning himself and flying directly at the hangar bay now with all of his pursuers with him. 
I swear, Tony rubbed off on you more than you know. Sam muttered out while face palming. Hark who's talking. Rody said, using his hut to time it right. The timing then had to speed up as his ship got a direct hit from the starfighters tailing behind him. Damn it. Using his repulsors, Rody fired off his canopy and flew out into the vacuum of space, while dropping in some detonation charges from his armor into his pilot's seat. Whirling around, he used his enhanced strength of the armor to kick the ship into the oncoming swarm of starfighters, and turned round to fly right into the Lucrahulk's hangar bay. Did he just... Kamikaze the shit out of those fighters? Yes he did. Sam spoke before adjusting his comm signal. You good, Rody. More than good. Rody declared, landing in the hangary bay and immediately unleashing his built-in arsenal at all the unsuspecting droids, when Tap warned him to duck. Crouching down, Rody saw the wreckages of the ships that had blown up behind him fly right into the hangar bay and crash into the many ships and other control panels, causing many droids to panic. Tap. Path has been laid out for you. Alright, Sam. Gonna do a run, just need you waiting for me on the other side to get a flyby pickup. Easier said than done, Rody. Sam grunted, spinning through space while gunning down two vultures he had been pursuing. Shaking his head, Rody activated his thrusters and rocketed forward at full speed, deeper into the battleship, while occasionally sprinkling a few explosives here and there. Within the bridge of the ship, Martuk was notified of the interior damage his ship began to sustain. What is the meaning of this? Mar barked out. It appears we have an intruder, sir. One of the droids informed him, bringing up security footage of one war machine flying through the ship at top speed. Martuk's jaw dropped, wondering just what in the hell he was looking at. He certainly was unaware of the Republic employing the uses of such powerful battle droids. Back at the Resolute, Anakin looked on with a raised brow at Rody's actions, and hearing it as well over the comms. Feels like deja vu seeing that. Thought the GD, remembering his first space battle prior to becoming a Padawan. Rody, Rody. Steve contacted his fellow Avenger. Are you alright in there? I'm good, Cap. Rody said with a grunt, punching a vulture droid that hung suspended from the ceiling down to the ground. He flew deeper and deeper into the Lucre Hulk ship, firing his repulsors left and right at targeted areas that would cause the greatest amount of damage. By this point, he reached the center of the ship. Now where is the ship's core? Tap thankfully brought up the answer, showing an outline of where he needed to go. Thank you. Readjusting himself, he blasted off and followed the trail. Back in the Lucre Hulk ship's bridge, Martux was freaking out upon seeing the live feed. Knowing the layout of his ship, he soon realized the direction the Republic droid was heading towards, given the amount of destruction it left behind so far. Destroy that droid before it kills your soul. Brody flew unimpeded even with so many droids now firing their blasters at him. He knew he only had one chance for this, so he had no choice but to utilize one of his stronger arsenals. Raising his arm and calling forth his ordinance of Cho's, Rody's armor targeted the core, and with the right angle he was right in front of it for a brief moment. Tank missile. Rody called out, firing the explosive right at the center of the core. Oh yeah, you really took on Tony's humor a bit more than you realize. Kabum K-R-R-I-S-H. Oh shut up, Falcon. Rody called out, pushing his thrusters faster and faster, zooming away from the explosive blast. I'm trying to focus here on escaping. Just fly by the other hangar entrance. Working on it. Just be patient man. Patience was thrown out of the window. Now hurry up. I'm in a dogfight outside the ship, shut up. Weaving through the falling debris, the war machine pushed his suit harder and harder, with the explosions becoming louder and louder. He saw the exit up ahead, making Tap divert all power to the thrusters. Zooming out of the now defunct September ship, Rody ended up whirling around due to him being hit by the blast shockwave. It freaked him out for a few moments before getting back into the hang of things. He then flew out into the vast expanse of space once more, witnessing the ongoing battle before him. Rody. Sam called out through the comms. Behind you. Spinning around, the war machine immediately fired off a repulsor blast dead center of the droid fighter. The attack punched a hole right through it, due to not only the force given by Rody, but also the speed the fighter came right at him. Hold on, coming in from your left. Turning to set direction, Rody saw Sam in his V-19 making a beeline right towards him at full speed. Rody angled himself upwards more and outstretched his hand, grabbing the passing V-19. Thanks for the lift. Yeah, try not to do that too often. Gonna be a bit for me to get used to flying like this in my suit in the vacuum of space. 
War Machine grunted out as he used his thrusters to stabilize himself and get a proper hold of Sam's ship. Taking a moment, Rhodey watched the continuing dogfight with a rather somber face. Geez, Tony had the worst anxiety after New York. Yeah, enough to create Ultron. Sam grimly commented. From their respective ships, the GD generals shared a questioning look and wondering who or what the Sultron was. And Anakin caught the rather dark look from Steve at the mention of the Sultron. Whoever this old foe was, it wasn't very good at all. They knew one thing for sure, the GD will want to talk about this at some point. Martu called the while was in a panic. What is the status of the ship? Mar inquired. Our shields and engines are down. His main commanding droid answered. Get all ships and begin defensive fire. Mar rapidly ordered. I need all ships to focus on protecting this ship. Get those Republic fighters out of our space. Roger Roger. Ahsoka meanwhile was now leading her men down for what appeared to be their final assault on the ship. Hold steady boys, we've got our chance. Ahsoka with a now confident grin as she gunned it forward with her squadron right on her tail. Blue squadron did their best to stay in formation, but it was starting to get rather hard, with the heavy fire now coming upon them. Axe, your thrusters are smoking. Kickback called out to him. I'm fine, kickback. Axe, break off and return to the resolute dot Ahsoka ordered. Negative commander, I'd never make it. Axe countered. I'm seeing this one through with you. Ahsoka looked back momentarily, wanting to argue further, but knew now wasn't the time for such a thing. Just stay close to me. Blue Squadron was tearing through the vast swarms of vultures and hyena starfighters, with one target in mind. With the rest of the blockade, it was beginning to get whittled down bit by bit, from the constant onslaught of the Republic fleet, with its dreadnoughts all being taken out unfortunately for them. Ahsoka. Anakin contacted her via comms. You take down that battleship, the blockade is letterless. We're counting on you. I know, master. Grunted out the Tortuga, having to spin around to avoid getting hit by enemy fire. Just give me time. Enemy bridge, dead ahead boss. Techno informed her making the Padawan narrow her eyes in focus when she was hit by a blaster bolt from several vultures flying in from above. Looking up in panic, Ahsoka pivoted her ship to avoid more fire but the vultures were now closing in on her. Tuak saw this and gripped his controls tightly. Oh no you don't, you clankers. Breaking off from formation, Tuak rushed on ahead. What are you doing, Axe? Slava bellowed out. Hearing this, Ahsoka momentarily broke concentration from the fight before her, and saw one of her clone troopers breaking away. Axe. Go on ahead commander, I've got you covered. Axe declared, firing at the vultures successfully shooting down one when his own blaster blew out. Damn it. Axe said. Instead of turning tail, Axe shoved his controls forward and flew at full speed towards the last vultures that were getting close to his commanding officer. Axe. Ahsoka cried out in horror just as the pilot crashed into the droids, taking both them and himself out. Sitting back, Ahsoka growled in anger and anguish, firing her torpedoes at the bridge of the Lucrahulk, landing a direct hit on the ship. The rest of Blue Squadron fired off their own collective wave of ion torpedoes directly at the bridge, with rapid successions of one hit after the other. Martuk had to steady himself as he was on his feet and tried running towards the doors. The recent attack shook the immediate area, almost causing him to fall down and hurt himself badly. I need to get out of here, muttered the Nemodian. The collective damage his ship had received from that warlike droid caused on top of the Republic Fighter Squadron's bombing run, was close to the last nail in the coffin for his ship. And he didn't want to stick around for the final one to be delivered. From the Resolute, Anakin watched with great pride at seeing the Lucrahulk ship begin to fragment, axe and imploding. That last attack was Ahsoka's and he felt it. Seems we'll finally be done before Mace shows up. Steve commented as his gaze was ever vigilant. This is Blue Squadron. Ahsoka's tired and dejected voice was heard over the intercom. All squadrons, returning home. Frowning, Anakin knew he could tell he'll need to talk to his Padawan once she gets back. Given the tone he heard from her, he knew something was clearly upsetting her. Steve and Anakin made their way down to the hangar bay, just as the squadrons began to fly back in. At the hangar, the different squadrons were landing in one by one, ship by ship. Though in Rhodey's case, he merely thrusted his way back down before unsealing his helmet for him inhale a bit of fresh air. They were met with cheers from their clones, all congratulating them on a job well done with much of the adulation going towards Sam, Rhodey and Ahsoka. Many were sent to rest or treat any wounds they might have gotten, while the three soldiers of the Avengers conversed with each other, along with Anakin. 
Out of the corner of his eye, the GD Knight spotted his Padawan who remained at her starfighter, and sat upon its left wing in a slouched and depressed manner. Excusing himself from the Avengers, Anakin approached his downtrodden Padawan who had her eyes fixed to the floor. You are right, Ahsoka. Yes, no, not really. Sighing, he asked the obvious question. What happened? I got men killed out there. Ahsoka said softly, more to herself than to Anakin. You put me in charge of Blue Squadron, and I got half of them killed under my command. Axe had to sacrifice himself just to give me a clear shot. Anakin frowned at his apprentice's attitude, understanding what she was feeling. I understand what you're going through right now. Ahsoka didn't say anything, prompting her GD master to sit beside her and continue. Shortly after the war began, I was given a squadron of my own. At the time I didn't care much about them and just focused on the mission as my men died left and right. I didn't think much about them, at first, but afterwards I started to feel absolutely horrible on it, making me want to better myself on the others I lead into battle. This made the Padawan tilt her head a little back towards Anakin's direction. It's good that you feel this way, Ahsoka. Anakin said, placing a hand on her shoulder. It shows how much you care for the men beneath you. You know it, I know it and they know it, especially. Anakin gestured his head over to where Blue Squadron's remaining pilots currently stood. Looking over to them, Ahsoka was surprised to see a rather heartwarming sight of them scrabbling the names of their fallen brethren, while also marking their helms to the color of her skin. You need to know this now that losing men under you, those that you started getting close to, will be a very bitter pill to swallow. You'll hate it, no doubt, but at least you got the chance to know them, and you'll want to fight on for their sakes. Ahsoka slumped once more when Anakin this time pulled her into a side hug. Which is why you gotta make their sacrifices and loyalty towards you count for something. Ahsoka lips quivered though she kept her emotions in check. Letting out a shaky breath, she gave her master an appreciative smile before getting up and going over to Blue Squadron. Giving them a boisterous congratulation, Anakin smiled as he watched the clones and his Padawan converse with each other. Over yonder, Steve was able to hear the conversation between Anakin and his Padawan students. He formed a sad, bitter smile as he knew quite well how Soka was feeling right now. When he lead the Howling Commandos, the first Avenger never lost a single man in his squad. They always looked out for each other and pulled each other out when fighting against Hydra's forces. And after each mission, they'd all celebrate a job well done. But after losing Bucky that fateful day, it devastated them all. Maressa was Steve as he knew him the longest. Sure he turned out to have survived and brainwashed not long after being rescued by Hydra, but neither of them knew this at the time. It took time for them to recover from that incident, which they used that misplaced emotion to avenge their fallen comrade the best way they could. Walking over to Anakin, Steve sat down beside him. How is she? Anakin let out a sigh. You know how she can be, but she's strong. She'll pull through. I could see that. Takes a lot after you, you know. Does she? Oh yeah. Arrogant, cocky, self-centered, totally sure of themselves to an absurd degree. A snort escaped from Skywalker's lips. Yeah, T-H-A-N-K-S really insightful there, Cap. But strong-willed. Kind and compassionate to her friends and cares for those she leads. A trait she picked up from you. You should be proud. I am. Anakin said right away smiling with pride at his Padawan who was now sharing a laugh with Blue Squadron. She's shaping up to be a great GD. General Skywalker. Admiral Euleran's voice came from Anakin's comms. Master Windu has arrived with his fleet. I hear you Admiral. Anakin responded, turning to Steve. From one fight to another. Right then, time to begin phase two. Steve only nodded, getting up to follow after Anakin, knowing that the liberation of Ryleth was just getting started, 